Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Zephron Olive, and we have something super sweet and special and new today. This is a brand new series we're trying out, and for this series, I'm going to be joined by Tomer. How's it going, Tomer? Hey everyone, how's it going, Seth? Uh, it's going awesome, I'm super excited for this series. So, <laughs> this is a series we're calling This or That Magic. And the basic idea of this series is we are going to try to answer life's most important questions the best way we know how with a game of magic. So, for example, this week, our question is cats or dogs. So if you're thinking about getting a pet to have wander around your home or your apartment, you're going to want to watch this one because by the time we're done with this episode, we're going to know definitively if you should get a cat or if you should get a dog. So I'm playing... A cat deck, and Tomer has a super sweet dog deck. And just a note, since this is the first episode, the idea of this is to be kind of a flavorful series. So we're playing essentially casual vintage, where we have the entire card pool of magic at our disposal, but... We've kind of made a, a gentleman's agreement to not be playing Black Lotuses and Moxin and stuff. We're trying to make flavorful, fun, casual decks that are on theme. So even though we have the whole card pool, don't be expecting us to just do completely busted stuff. The idea is to make it as much on theme as possible. So, Tomer, why don't you tell us a little bit about the dog deck that you're bringing to battle <laughs> on this episode of This or That Magic? Well, my dog deck is fairly straightforward. I'm playing mostly dogs, which in in Magic, it's all hounds instead of the dog type. Uh, I am running a couple, two wolves in my deck as well, Briar Pack Alphas. Uh, I figure that they are the ancestor of dogs, so that's close enough. <laughs> and, and it's a really sweet card, so I wanted to show it off a bit. Um, otherwise, yeah, I'm running also just flavorful cards, like some basilisk collars to quip onto your <laughs> dogs, uh, gathering the pack, just so you get a pack of dogs and you keep some card advantage going up. Eh, pretty, pretty straightforward stuff. And then some cards that I want to have as a sort of surprise for you, Seth, if it shows up. Oh, well... <laughs> That's good, because I have a couple surprises, too, that I'm not going to talk about now. But much like you, I am pretty cat-focused. I think every single one of my creatures are cats in one way or another. And I also kind of focused on the art to some extent, because I wanted to make sure that I got some cats that actually look like the house cats that would be wandering around your house or your apartment, and not just all be lions and panthers and these big ferocious cats. They're all humanoid cats. So I have some cats that probably aren't very good as far as gameplay goes, <laughs> but they look a lot like the cat that you would think of uh, wandering around your house. So I'm super excited for it to have some surprises. So anyway, let's jump into this match and try to answer the question, <laughs> cats or dog? I love that we're settling the debate between cats and dogs in a game of magic. <laughs> that is fantastic. That's the only way to settle things. Ooh, and I say I've won the die roll, so... Hooray me. I would like to play first. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. In, in Constructed, if you have four lands in your opener, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I've played a lot of Commander where you can just dirtle, but uh, this is going to be a bit new to me. Uh, hmm. You know what? I think I'm going to keep it. I'm feeling lucky. <laughs> I, I kind of have the opposite problem, where I have two lands in a bunch of four and five drops, uh, but I'm going to try it as well. Heart of the cards, heart of the cards. Oh boy, <laughs> here we go. So, it's a janky deck, and yet I'm still playing the best dual land ever printed <laughs> to run out the best one drop ever printed, arguably, maybe, <laughs> Jackal Pup. <laughs> This used to be a constructed all-star back in the day. I think it was like the Sly deck or something? Uh, yeah, it was like the original aggressive red one-drop. Uh, well, my one-drop, not a constructed all-star. Not even a limited all-star. <laughs> <laughs> but it is very cat-like. This oh, is wow. the Sanctuary Cat. It's the perfect answer to the Jackal buff. <laughs> it, stonewalled. So it begins. <laughs> 
All right. Uh, this is also interesting. This actually does not work in my case right now, which is funny. Uh, but I'll show that off a little bit later. You know what? I think I'm going to hold off on attacking. Ooh. I'm going to just play a wild dogs. <laughs> It's See, a... if I attacked with the jackal pup, then the wild dogs would immediately go to your <laughs> side, which not not the best situation. Uh, These dogs are not loyal, apparently. Uh, they they they're wild, <laughs> yeah. as their name suggests. Oh, very flavorful. And then a collar to, of course, equip it with like a pug or something on it. Uh, fun, <laughs> oddly enough, if you gain life with that, I will also gain control of your wild dogs. <laughs> so the the synergy is really coming through. Um, oh, ooh, no. all right. Talk about things that shut down two ones. We have a oh. <laughs> the black cat. <laughs> um, well, I have I have the counter for that. My my hand is basically not useful anymore. So <laughs> <laughs> can get rid of all those extra lands at random. Oh boy, that's exactly what I plan on doing. All right, I I got this. Can I reveal a mountain or a forest? I'll reveal a mountain. So Seth, are you a cat person or a dog person? Uh, well, today I'm a cat person. That is true. <laughs> uh, let me let me just equip the old <laughs> wild dogs. Mogus's warhound. It's force attack, and now it's it's a pretty sizable threat, I would say. The this Boom. is this is going to get interesting. Uh, yeah, I guess we are taking four four from the the double hound combo. You don't want to block with the black cat. Uh, not get rid yet. of my super powered cards. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. So I think I think uh. This one bothers me. It doesn't really look all that cat-like, but technically in the magic world, Leonins are cats. They're yeah. kind of like lion people. But we're going to tap down that jackal pup. Oh, no. Are you getting aggressive with the one ones? <laughs> the <laughs> one power? <laughs> Sanctuary cat and black cat <laughs> getting in there. Oh, no. The clock is real. And I, I think... Oh, no. What is it? At the beginning of your upkeep, if a player has, oh, more life than each other player. Oh, yeah. As uh, long as I stay at a higher life total than you at my upkeep, I'm okay. Oh, I was reading that backwards. I was thinking that I was the, the wild dogs were going to be traitorous and join the cat side of the fight. Oh, no. It would have been if I attacked the jackal pup first. That's why I got to hold that one back. Uh, I'm curving out pretty well, I would say. Um, actually, I should attack first, as is tradition. Uh, I guess I can attack with both at this point. Boom. Uh, I think the cats have to take the beating down to eight. All right, this is this is a spicy one. Probably the best uh hound in my deck. Ooh. Hound of Gristlebrand, double that, strike and undying. That is a good one. I the cats are stuck with two lands at the moment, so I think that means we just have to. Pass the turn. Play some defense. Yes, wild docks. I get it. Okay. Uh, let us just equip Basil's color onto the double strike, dude. Oh man, death touch, life link, and double strike is pretty scary. Uh, play Cinder Glade. Do I swing with everything? I suppose that's the correct play. Yeah, you swing with wild dogs. I know that much. Oh yeah, that, that that's out of my control. They do what they please. They're wild. Uh, so how do we do this? Hmm. I have a. I have a removal spell, but I'm not sure what to target. If I kill the wild dogs, you're gonna get the warhounds, which. It's kind of annoying. If we kill Hound of Grizzlebrand, it gets bigger, which is also yeah. <laughs> annoying. I think we got to go after Hound of Grizzlebrand, though. So I have Pax Disdain, so I get to choose a oh. creature type and give a creature negative one, negative one for each permanent of the chosen type that I control. So we're going to choose Cat. It's the Cat Removal <laughs> spell. <laughs> uh, and then it only I, gets bigger. And then I guess Black Cat is going to do its job, block the Jackal Pup, Ah, my last card. <laughs> Make you discard your land. Ah, my forest. <laughs> Come on, deck. Uh, oh, this actually, this kind of works. 
Uh oh. This is a uh, the cat version of Night of the White Orchid. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, that gets plans. Yeah, so I get to search for a planes, and since we're playing insane mana bases with janky decks, I will get a scrubland, play a scrubland, <laughs> <laughs> and I guess pass the turn and hope we can figure out a way to stay alive. Hmm. Cool. Uh oh. Uh oh. I guess I'm just gonna do the whole equip thing and attacking again. That seemed to work out well last time. Uh, Boom. Here comes the dogs. So let's see. Let's block. Oh, uh, I don't want to kill that, though. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we got to do this. Uh, it's a massacre. It It's a catastrophe. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll assign blockers this way. This is all good. And then... Oh, no. You ne dun, dun, dun. So you're going to deal three damage, or so you think. Actually, yeah, you will. But I'm pumping him up <laughs> oh, by one. Oh, no. <laughs> howl, of, howl of the Hunger Pack? Wait, did it work? Or Hunger of the Howl Pack. Did, did, did it not do anything? Uh. Uh. Huh. The, it's still a 4-3, it says. Um, uh, does guess... how of the hunger pack not work? I oh, we'll see what happens here as combat damage. Uh... Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, dogs are moto fail number one. <laughs> I, I tried. <laughs> oh, only Tomer can come play the first game of constructed in years and and has a moto fail in his deck. Uh... We're, figure, we're just helping at um, Wizards Tech support right now, <laughs> figuring out what cards don't work. Uh, I think we're pretty dead here, but I do have a a lion. Ooh. Not as ferocious as you think. It's going to get wrecked by these hounds. I think I'll just play my stomping ground. In case I draw another black cat to make you discard yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to discard it. I need all my mana for, for my jackal pups. So I guess we got to block this double striker. Ooh, down to one. Oh, dear. Well, I can show you my super sweet anthem effect that I'm not going to get to use. Uh. <laughs> the Leonin Sun Standard, the cat anthem, and another sanctuary cat. Lee had four cats. Yeah, the mana did not pan out this time. Yeah, my hand was a l had a lot of my expensive cats, but not many lands. Well, I will not reveal my last card. All or right. Third. Oh, well, dogs jump out to the early lead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, as far as sideboarding, I, I looked for cards that were like, destroy target dog. I don't think any exist. <laughs> dog napper. <laughs> dog napper. Uh, I just put a very, like, all-around sideboard. I have stuff with reach in case you had flying cats. Uh. Uh, yeah, and apparently you don't. If you had some artifacts or enchantments, I had some of that. If you're very aggressive, I have some life gain with not to the bone. So I think I think I'm just gonna ship it as is. I think this worked. Yeah, it did seem to go pretty well. I think I'm gonna add in a a couple cheaper cats and try to lower my curve a bit after not getting there in game one, and then just uh keep it pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. So I will say that I have always been a dog person. I've actually uh, softened up a bit to cats, but when I was a kid, never liked cats. All the cats that my friends had were very mean, very <laughs> scratchy if you tried to pet them or anything. So I already had, like, instilled at an early childhood a dislike for cats. Also, I'm mildly allergic to them, too, so that didn't help. Uh... But... I have similar cat experiences. My grandmother had, like, the meanest cat in the world. So uh, today I'm a, a cat person by default, but in real life I'm uh, kind of rooting for your deck to win. Oh, no, there's no cat people. Well, I want to hear, hear from the comments section uh, people's arguments why cats are superior.
Also, um, in the comment section, if you have any sweet this or that questions you want us to consider for future episodes, make sure to leave those as well. And just let us know what you think, because this is the first episode of the series, so if y'all like it, we'll probably make more of them. If it's not really your thing, let us know that too, and we'll uh, invest our time in other uh, series and videos. So, mm -hmm, For sure. I want to hear the jankiest themes possible from, <laughs> from the comment section. <laughs> Uh, uh, this hand is actually perfect, I think. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh, Hopefully your hand is good too, Seth. <laughs> I have one of my surprise cards, if I can get Ooh. to it. And I get to scry, which hopefully fully will make sure I make my land drops. Scrying is good. Actually, I have I have a pretty good early play, but ooh, okay, never mind. That's, that's even better. All right, game trail. Showing off the mountain. Turn one. It's everyone's favorite <laughs> jackal pup. <laughs> oh, this might look a little bit like last game. A pretty aggressive start. Can't complain. Oh, uh, I guess I need to tap black mana to cast the black cat. Oh, I don't want to discard. <laughs> that card is really annoying. Way more annoying than it should be is just a 1-1 one, one for 2 mana. Yeah. And it handles the jackal pup so well. It does. Ooh. I guess I'm just going to hold off on the jackal pup. Don't really want to trade and discard. That seems bad. Um. Well, let's play the sun standard. No, no. <laughs> to pump up the cats. The cats. Uh, all right. Uh, um, I guess I will just play another wild mongrel because oh. I don't really want to discard that. And now I will attack, I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, I guess we'll just take it for now. Okay. Ooh, well, that's... If I'm not going to draw lands, that's a decent cat to draw. Blade of the Six Pride. Yikes. Actually might be able to sort of stop Wild Mongrel-ish. It does trade with it pretty well. Or at um, least make you discard a whole bunch of cards, which is probably okay. Hmm. I guess I start playing out my hand of good cards. <laughs> Basil's Collar returns, and everyone's other favorite jackal, the Jackal Familiar. <laughs> I'm really, really getting in there, developing the board state. Yeah, yeah that's a, a pretty impressive, actually. Dogs are aggressive. I think we start attacking with everything. Yeah, why not? That seems fine. All right, we're going to do some blocking. If you want to discard two cards to keep your wild mongrel alive, that's fine. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I figured being Tomer, who likes drawing cards, you probably wouldn't want to just, like, mind twist your own hand for a two-drop. Well, okay. <laughs> no! <laughs> More black cats. Not like this. Oh, sweet. I get to play... My, uh, my last good card in my hand. Two-headed Cerberus. Very good at killing one-ones, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep. Two heads will do that. Oh, I guess we gotta take it again. Huzzah! The dogs. There's land number three. So let's... Uh... <laughs> play some more cats. <laughs> oh. Hey, it's very good if you pump it up. That is true. It gives me some lifelink. Uh, okay. Let us play Kessig Wolf Run. Ooh, okay. Hmm. Actually, I think I'm just gonna... Yeah. Let us equip the two-headed Cerberus. Sure. And then just attack over everything? That seems fine. Ooh. Interesting. You have those pump spells, which makes everything <laughs> a little risky. But I think I think we go for it. We block like this, and then we cat anthem up our team <laughs> to two twos. I think I think that was the proper way. Uh, oh, I'm gonna have to go down to zero cards in hand. That is bad. When we get rid of gather the pack. Uh, okay, makes sense. And then since I'm going to get rid of it anyway, I'm going to show you my trump card. Dog pile. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the flavor. 
<laughs> and there we go. So I'm now hell bent. If you deal with the sports state, I'll be very sad. Uh, there's a land. Hmm. So I think uh, I. Th- I... All right, let's uh, let's just do this now. Uh, talk about trump cards. I have nameless inversion. Not only kills your creature, but makes it no longer a dog. It loses <laughs> all creature types, so it's a double a double win. Oh no! Sending a message. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess since I have nothing better to do, let me pump up this dude. Does this make me die? No. Mm, no. But you do go down to six. Yeah, that's that's bad. That's all right. <laughs> and with the collar, I gain some life as well. Ooh, 27. Pretty nice. Oh, can't cast that yet. All right. I guess we got to pass. Oh. But what do you have? Uh, We'll see. We'll see. All right. Well, we're going to see right now. <laughs> I'm just going to do this with the wolf run. Pumping it up. It's a six again. Okay, so I have <laughs> a a card to kill your dog and give you another dog. I'm fine uh, with this. The, oh, crib, okay. the crib swap. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't look like a dog, but I'll take it. <laughs> Technically, it's a dog and a cat. I suppose. Uh, and then we'll just play the lion. Uh-oh. Oh, my shapeshifter can still get in there, though. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, thanks to that wolf run. Uh, hmm, probably should have. Yeah, never mind. All right, let me get in there with the shapeshifter. <laughs> All right, well, I mean, we don't really have a choice. <laughs> Got a block. Pumping it up. Take three. Yep, down to down to three. Come on, deck. Unfortunately, no other dogs in my hand right now. Oh, Sanctuary Crap. And uh, unfortunately, oh. <laughs> Leonin Sun Standard doesn't stack very well. You only really ever need one. Well, if I ever destroy the first one, you got yeah. backup. <laughs> that's that's true. Oh, All right, no. well, I do have another hand. And it's getting equipped. Uh-oh. Boom. I think this is death. Soon. I'll show you my last card. The combo of trample and double strike and lifelink is is pretty good. One, two, three. Yeah, all right. Well, past the turn, but I think I just die here thanks to death, touch, and trample. Hmm. Okay. Well, pumping it up. Boom. Six power. Oh, I had again? I had one of my trump cards in hand. Oh, did you need one more mana? Uh, actually, two more. I do have <laughs> White Sun Zenith, <laughs> <laughs> which makes cat tokens. But I think we uh, we just die here. Yeah, you take two. E- just lethal. Yep. Oh, well. It looks like, uh, apparently, dogs are the way to go. Yeah, dogs, dogs, cats. This is, this is a pretty good deck. <laughs> I, uh, I had cat astrophy in my hand, <laughs> which I was hoping to cast to either kill all your dogs or kill all your lands. And I also had a cataclysm, which were two, uh, of, two of my two of my secret that... cards in the deck. <laughs> what what were your surprises that I didn't get to see? Uh, well, you got to see dog pile, which I discarded. Um, I'd say my other tricks were bark shell blessing. <laughs> bark shell, yes. Um, and it gives target creature plus two plus two until end of turn, and it has a conspire cost, so you can tap two creatures of the same color type um, to to basically twin cast or, or double the bark shell blessing, so you can give like basically something plus four plus four. And I also had a wildfire Cerberus. Which, if you did um, gum up the board with a bunch of cat tokens, uh, whenever it becomes monstrous, it deals two damage to each opponent, each creature your opponent's control. Very good at killing one ones. 
but otherwise, yeah, just very aggressive, <laughs> aggressive dogs, pretty uh, much. So I wonder, I wonder if uh, dogs in Magic are just strictly better than cats. Like looking at the dogs and the cats. I think the biggest advantage I saw from your dogs was probably two things. For one thing, uh, your one drops have two power, <laughs> while mine yeah. either have one power and one toughness, or sometimes they get one more toughness. So you kind of naturally get more aggressive start with the dog deck than when you do with cats. And there's not much you can do about that. I think I have every one drop cat in my deck, and that's just how the cats are. And the other <laughs> thing you get is a lot of double strike, which is a pretty sweet combination, especially with uh, the Bacillus Scholar and Keswick Wolf Run. So Double Strike was very powerful as well. As far as the cats, we didn't get to see any of the rare cats, but they, I guess the upside of cats is they have some incidental life gain, like Healer of the Pride gains a couple life whenever a creature enters the battlefield. Uh, Kemba Skyguard gains two life when it enters the battlefield. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's one of the upsides. And if we get an aggressive start, we have some cats that tap down creatures for a turn that make it so a creature can't block until end of turn. I guess that's about it. I think if we did this again, I would probably try to explore for the cats avenue, probably Naya cats, because I remember in Shards of Alara, Leonins were heavily uh, supported. You had Wild Nicotl, you had Kasali Pride Mage, you had Kasali Ambusher, and those are all really powerful cats. Maybe a Naya styled cat deck might do a little bit better, but you'd be focusing less on the actual like house cats and more on you know, like the fantasy humanoid type cats, which may not uh, be the flavor that you were going for as well. Yeah, that part was sort of a conscious choice that I made in deck building. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the better cats are not all that cat looking. And I really wanted the sanctuary cats. Uh, we didn't see Entrials Feaster, uh, Black Cat. Uh, so a bunch of those cats, they look like normal cats, which was kind of mm -hmm. my goal. I actually, right before we played, I added in some more cats, but my original build of the deck was exclusively cats that looked like house cats, which was part of what I was going for. And then I changed it up a little bit at the end, uh, just for power level concerns. I was afraid that playing all one powered creatures might not work out in, <laughs> in my favor. <laughs> uh, so that was a, that is a really good point though. I think you could build a cat deck that was maybe more competitive if you went and Denia and played more Leonins and some of the shards of Alara cards, but I wanted to try to keep the house cat flavor as much as I could, since with cats I actually had that option. You don't have too many, like, black labs or pugs in Magic for the hound side, but since I was cats, I actually could make a, a deck that looked like house cats. Mm -hmm. And on my end, too, if, if we stuck with, like, house dogs versus house cats, easiest way to cut back on the deck's power level, cut, take out the Briarpack Alphas and take out the two uh, Keswick Wolf Runs. There are plenty of other more dog-like cards to throw in that are hounds. Um, I had like Thrashing Moss Dog in the sideboard. I had another Hound of Gristlebrand. And there was no shortage of dog-like um, cards to throw in. So if you want to stick more to the flavor, cut those wolves out, put in more dogs. And yeah, I would say just in general, house cats versus house dogs, at least in MTG, dogs are going to win, I would say, <laughs> pretty oh, handily. Oh. And that means when, you, when you're when you looking for a pet purchase, <laughs> you always pick the dog because they're awesome and they'll beat up cats in, in MTG. <laughs> oh, that is true. So we answered the question. We've determined once and for all, cats or dogs, you got to go with the dog. So sorry, cats and cat people. <laughs> Dogs are the winner, so if you're looking for a pet in the near future, uh, hopefully this episode of This or That Magic will help you out and uh, allow you to make the right choice for your pet. Uh, <laughs> anyway, like we said before, this is the first episode. Let us know what you think in the comments uh, so we know if we should be making more. Also, uh, where do you land on the cat or dog issue? And... If you have any sweet this or that questions that we could explore and answer once and for all at some point in the future, leave those in the comments as well. So anyway, Tomer, it was fun, even though you crushed me with your dog deck. 
Uh, hey, that was part of the fun, right? <laughs> for, for, you, for, for you, maybe. Uh, yeah. but it's thanks. always a pleasure playing with you, Seth. Uh, Even thanks. if we're not doing this, any any dual deck suggestions, throw them in the comment section. I want to hear about it. Definitely. Well, thanks for taking the time to hang out, Tomer. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll do one of these again in the future if you all like us. So let us know. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.